Father God, as we gather here in this place, as we hear the joyous strains of the music lifted heavenward from the organ and the voices that you have created, we thank you, Father, for being such a good and a gracious God. We thank you, Father, for your blessings upon this life that we have, the ones that we're so undeserving of, yet you see fit to send us regularly. Lord, help us never to have a closed eye to those blessings. Make us always aware of your presence in our life. And Lord, on the flip side of that coin, help us to always be aware, Father, of the opportunities for service that we have for you. The times when it may be inconvenient for us, but Father, that we are called to do your will, and therefore you give us the strength, the courage to do that which is right, that which is necessary. Father, help us never to coast along in our Christian faith, but always looking for the higher plane to step upon, always looking for the next ministry opportunity, Father, to be able to be your hands and your feet in this world. Lord, as we worship today, clear our hearts and our minds. Help us, Lord, to be the person that you would have us to be in this world, to go out and to change the world for thee, to reach others and let them know what you've done in our lives. We thank you again for each person who's gathered here this morning and the multitudes more who may like to have been here but could not this day due to traveling, health, sickness, whatever it might be, Father. We pray that you reach out and touch them, meet their every need. Father, we ask that you would be with us now as we worship you in truth and in spirit. Forgive us of our many sins and make us whole. We ask these things in the name of Christ our Savior, for he is the one who taught us to pray even when we didn't know how. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, I'll be reading Psalms 22, verses 22 through 30. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All your descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all your descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. At the end of the earth, will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, prosperity will serve him. In future generations, will be told about the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of prayer this morning is number 354. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. 354.
God, giver of every perfect gift under heaven, for we who are the recipients of are so grateful. We thank you for your presence with us here today. We ask you, Father, that as we study your word and as we share together in this service, that we might be a better person because of it. Lord, there's so much turmoil in our world right now, wars, the rumors of wars, just as it talks about in the book of Revelation. We ask, Father, that you would help us to stay strong and strengthen as your children, to stay encouraged, to encourage one another. And, Father, that we might continue about doing your work that you've called us to do in spite of all the news reports around us. We pray, Father, this day for all of our doctors, all of our firefighters, police officers, the caregivers in the nursing homes, our military stationed around the world. We ask you, Father, to care for each of them, be with their families, Father. As many of these people are working today and working holidays, and many in the military are away from their families for months and months, even while children are born and lives change and, and their families grow up. Lord, we ask that you bless them in a very special way. Now, there come a time, Lord, when we would uh, not need a military even, uh, that the world might cooperate in peace in many different areas, but Father, we know until that time comes that we have that great need and ask you to bless them. Father, bless our little church. Help us, Father, to grow. Help us to grow not only in numbers, but to grow in spirit to be able to serve our community for you. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Broke. That was a representative by Mr. B. Broke, tortured, and finally broke, killed on the cross of Calvary for our salvation and for all those who have believed. Christ and we pray. Amen.
Bibles to Mark 8, and we're going to look at verses 31 through 38 to begin with. And we're going to talk about, will it still sell? Will it still sell? Mark chapter 8, verse 31 through 38. And here we read these words. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and reject, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called to the crowd, to him along with the disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when He comes in His Father's glory with the holy angels. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Again, Father, as we approach Your throne, we ask You to deal with each of us mercifully. We ask You, Father, to forgive us of our sins. And most of all, at this point in the service, Father, we ask that you clear our hearts, clear our minds, make a straight and narrow channel to you and your holy word. May the Holy Spirit speak to us from these passages of Scripture and the words that are about to leave my stumbling lips. May they fall upon our ears, enter into our hearts and our souls. May they find good and fertile soil to grow upon. And then we take them out and the things that we learn from them and share them with the world around us. We ask these things in your holy name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Well, a few years ago, I was at the West Virginia State Fair. And I saw it. I saw the kitchen miracle. And I watched the presentation up on the stage. And I saw how it could slice and dice and puree make coleslaw in three seconds and do a thousand other things it seemed like that needed to be done in the kitchen. And it would take much less time to do it according to the presenter. Now I like to cook, but I don't like to spend a great deal of time in the kitchen doing it. I'm one of those instant cooks, I guess you might call it. I'm going to take the shortcut if it is one. At first I hesitated. I didn't want to look too eager. And then finally after they finished the presentation, they opened up a little sales booth next to it. I got caught up in the enthusiasm of the crowd. And I pulled out my Visa card, and the next thing I knew, I was the proud owner of a brand new kitchen miracle. Well, you know whether we welcome them or not, aren't we always assaulted in life by people offering up the next greatest thing and the next real deal? Sometimes all you got to do is turn on the television, right? And this thing is going to make your life better. You know, it's going to make your hair shinier. It's going to make your skin clearer. It's going to ease your life and give you three extra hours in every day. Something that they're pushing, you know. A certain magic lotion, a certain book that you read that will do wonders for your life. All of your problems will melt away. That something tells us that we're important. And they try to make us believe that we can have it all or have it our way also. So it's difficult for us to believe any of it, isn't it? And we take it with a dose of healthy skepticism, really. Uh, not only in the marketplace, but it follows us into the church as well. Somehow we wonder if this same old message, no matter how many times we, or how many different preachers we hear it preach from, or how many times we hear the scripture read, we think, gosh, is that old message, you know, is it going to sell still today? You see it every day. Churches are changing the way that they do business now to try to get new folks in because they feel like the same old message is not doing it. And so they start changing. They put easy chairs in the sanctuaries now instead of pews when they build a new church. They had one 
cartoon that somebody sent me not too long ago that showed up everybody in the pew and the back of it where they pulled the lever reclined like your chair. And the guy that was selling the pews told the pastor, he said, we call this one the lost half hour. New praise bands, new music, early morning service. There's one church within us not too far of a drive from here that has three services, but it's not three of the same service. One of them is a contemporary service, one of them is a traditional service, and one of them is a praise type service. So they have like three different kinds of services that you can choose to go to. Some big church churches even have restaurants or coffee shops that are like the equivalents of Starbucks in them now. The reason a lot of churches are doing this is that their leaders keep on asking in business meetings and staff meetings, do people even believe what we're preaching anymore? Do we need to repackage it so it will sell? Do we need to get up on the stage like the Kitchen Miracle at the West Virginia State Fair and shine lights on it and show everybody in a flashy way so it will sell to the people? And yet, even behind the skepticism, we do have the need to believe. We all have the need to believe in God, whether we believe it or not. We need to believe that the story that we hear about Jesus Christ and His life on earth and the miraculous things that He did and God Almighty and the power that He has to give us eternal life and to change the lives of people here in the now that day, that story we hear day in and day out, we need to know that it is more than just a story. We need to know that it is our story. And we can add our own bits to it as to what God has done for us. Amen? And our eternal destiny and our eternal souls rest on it. Then again, we come to the gospel for this day and we read the words, If anybody wants to become my follower, let them do what? Deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life, he says, will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. And we hear those words and we wonder, will it sell? If we told that and taught that to the masses, would it sell? Those of you that were here Wednesday night and we watched the video of John the Baptist preaching, if somebody preached like that on the corner of Jefferson Street and Campbell Avenue today at 1 o'clock, how long do you think it would be before the police were coming? Just a few seconds, probably. <laughs> Wouldn't take long. I mean, John was laying it out to him there, wasn't he, on Wednesday night in the video where we were watching him preaching to the people. And he was about to get arrested, but we knew what God's will was, and it wasn't the time. And so one of those, the, they portrayed that in the video by one of the Roman centurions comes and says, no, it's not time yet. But one of them had his fear to start toward John. Because John was laying it out. He wasn't sugarcoating it. He didn't have a praise band. He didn't have a laser light show. He didn't have a Starbucks in the church. He didn't have anything. But he was telling them what God said. And that was enough. That was all the packages they needed. Amen. Denying ourselves is not something that we want to do internally. We have to have that extra help. Because that's what God requires. God requires that we deny all of ourselves and give ourselves totally to Him. Even as we ask our questions and we admit our skepticism, and the crowd in front of John the Baptist had questions for him that day, didn't they? So even as we ask our questions and we admit that we're skeptics, skeptics about this whole will this gospel thing sell today. We still have an emptiness inside us that needs to be filled while all that's being ironed out. We're forced to admit that somehow all the values that we have, considered our values, earning a paycheck, depending on friends, depending on families, they haven't always worked all the time, have they? We realize that we can't define ourselves by what we do, for what we do may not be there tomorrow. We can't always be confident and gain strength from our families and our friends. I don't know the situation, and I wouldn't name the name, but 
One of my friends on Facebook yesterday, I just was scrolling down the news feed, and one of them said, if you're a member of my family, you've proven yourself. You can all go ahead and unfriend me, and if you haven't done it by tomorrow, I'll do it for you. Now, I have no idea what in the world happened, but it must have been something big. But that kind of proves out what I was preaching on today. You might can depend on your family sometimes, and some of you in this room may could depend on your family your entire life, and that's great. But for some people, that isn't a reality. Some people's families don't stick together. Some people's family will do them wrong just as quick as a stranger will do. And I've seen that happen time and time again. What I'm trying to tell you is that we can't always rely on what we've always done to fill that emptiness because it may not be there for you. So we've all been there if we've been. Friends have let us down, family have let us down. So we do have that need to believe and this gospel and this God, they aren't afraid to address that. Our needs and our skepticisms. The gospel addresses our emptiness, our loneliness, and accepts our skepticism for what it is because it tells us about Jesus. It tells us about God's Son who saved the whole world by giving up His own life. It proclaims the power of Jesus who took all of our sin and all of our suffering and put it on Himself and He carried it to the hill of Golgotha in the form of a heavy cross. It proclaims the miracle of God's love for us by showing us Jesus who became the Christ, who was anointed with the oil of all of our suffering as well as the stench of all of our sin. Jesus is the only one who was truly able to deny all of himself in human form and to follow through with the charge that God gave him. And that was to suffer and die for the sins of all humankind. So as Jesus invites us to deny ourselves and to take up our crosses, really he is telling us, folks, there's something lacking in our lives and in our hearts. I need to deny my job if I think my job gives me ultimate meaning in life. If I believe that I would be lacking without anything in my life that is a man-made thing or a man-given thing, then I need to deny that. Those, can, those things cannot stand in front or in place of Jesus Christ in our lives. We need to deny that. In other words, we become empty and lonely if we only define ourselves by whom we are, the neighborhood that we live in, the car that we drive, the clothes that we wear, or our current situation in life, whatever it might be. If we let all of those things, and even our relationships with others, if we let those define who we are, deep down, the day is going to come when we'll be separated from all of those things. And then what are we left with? Jesus, however, knows our imperfections. Jesus knows and accepts all of our weaknesses. He made us. He knows us. He knows how difficult it is for us to deny ourselves. Man, we as humans, we're a stubborn bunch of people, aren't we? We want to fix all our problems. We, we know we have the right answer. We know we can do it. I'll call on God if it's really bad. But I, I can do this. That's what, that's what we as humans like to do. And because of that, Jesus will take all of our burdens and all of our imperfections with Him to the cross. And in doing that, He doesn't leave us alone. He doesn't leave us to carry those crosses and those burdens ourselves. He takes them upon His back, just like He did that cross that He carried to Calvary. Those burdens that lead to loneliness and a lack of fulfillment, He puts them all to death, and He does that as He dies for us. He does it all for our benefit, for nothing else. Christ does all of that that we might be His own, His own children, that live in His kingdom one day, Serve Him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessings. He does all of this because He wants us to know that we're loved regardless. An unconditional love. Well, you know, it had been almost a week or so later when I got back from the West Virginia State Fair that year. 
And I was in the kitchen cooking. And suddenly, you know what I remember? The kitchen miracle was out in the trunk of the car. As I stood there chopping vegetables with a knife, as I had done for years and years, my kitchen miracle was outside. How different it is for us who are claimed by Jesus. Because Jesus doesn't stay boxed up on a shelf or in the trunk of our vehicle. He comes to this earth. He suffers. He dies. He invites us to follow Him and get involved in His ministry in local churches just like this. Whatever talents I give you, He says, use them. If you can make a cake, make somebody a cake. If you can sing in the choir, come on and sing in the choir. We'll take it if you can't sing, so come on in. <laughs> we'll practice right after church is over. If you can visit, then visit. If you can change a light bulb, then volunteer to do that for your church. If you can go out in the community and serve others, whatever gifts God's given you, He calls you to come. I'll take your burdens. I know your weaknesses. I know your skeptics. I'm in your heart and in your mind. I know more who you are, and the Lord says, I have made you, and I've called you to be my own. And He will do all of that for us. But He comes to this earth, He suffered, He died, He invites us to follow Him, and with the help of His Holy Spirit, God will give us the power to do that. And His message will be relevant today, plain, unwrapped, just as it is, not only now, but always. Plus nothing and minus nothing. Let us remember that as we go out into the world in just a few moments and just and start to serve Him wherever we may find ourselves. Let's pray. Father God, as You have spoken to us from the book of Mark, we realize and know that it is up to us to take ourselves, all that we think we are, and to deny that. As I said, Lord, many of us will identify ourselves by the job that we have, the position or the title that we have, by the car that we drive, by the home that we live in. To us, that means it's us. When people think about, insert your name here, they'll think of those things. But Lord, you've taught us in your holy word that that is not who we are. We are yours and bought with a price when we give our lives to you. And we are so much more than all of those things. All of those things individually are added together. We are so much more. Lord, you just simply ask that we follow you. Lay down our burdens at your feet and follow you. And perform, Lord, the things and the charges that you've called us to do here on this earth. You have asked, Lord, that we simply share our story with others. And that we serve you with our heart and our soul and love our neighbors also as ourselves. Lord, may we as the few people in this church this morning, if we haven't already done so, may we begin that. May we light a fire of revival in our areas of neighborhoods that, Lord, would catch on and would spread. Our world simply needs more Christ in it. And may we be those people doing your will that help to carry that ministry out. And now, Lord, as we close this service, we ask if there be anybody here that needs to make a decision for you. That, Lord, you would open up the floor now as we sing a hymn, that you might give them the courage to step out and come forward. That they might know their own friends. And they might make decisions for their soul before it is everlasting too late. Father, lead and guide us through these last few moments of this service, and we'll praise your name for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is no, number 558. It's Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. If you turn there and stand as you're able, we'll sing together. If you do have something to share, please come forward. Someone will be here with you in the front of the sanctuary. We'll be glad to pray with you about a situation to show you how to become a child of Christ, uh, to talk to you about the waters of baptism. Anything it is that gives God honor before you come as we sing together. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Go now in peace to love and serve in Christ's name, and may God's love fill you from within. May Christ's compassion and forgiveness be your guide and compass, and may the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and encourage you all the way through this both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.